Hi everybody, well today I'm going to be starting a new knife build. Um, this one I'm building it for my good friend John who um, he's actually given me some of the parts that I'm going to use to make this knife with. So I'll give you an idea of what it is. Um, effectively he is uh, an avid bow hunter and on previous trips out to Africa he has shot several warthog. Now he's very kindly basically given me a uh, several sets of warthog tusks so I'm going to see if I can incorporate some of this ivory into the handle of a knife um, I checked with him to see what kind of knife he would like and he thought a tanto blade would be a good one to add to his collection so I've basically scoured online I found this uh, template here which I think will be about fitting um, it's quite a large knife but I think it'll be pretty awesome. Um, I've added to it, but what I'm going to build it out of is this 5mm thick piece of 1095. So it should be a nice chunky knife by the time it's done. I'm um, going to try and give it a hollow grind. And then, so far as a handle, we'll have to see just what decent what usable sections I can get out of these. Uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see whether we have to chop them into smaller sections and laminate them. Um, well, quite what we will do we'll probably end up with a combination of G10 with some warthog ivory in between. Life's too short to try dremeling all the rest of this profile off, so I'm going to take it to a nice 36 grit on here to do the rest for me. Okay, well we're all set up here, ready to start grinding the primary bevel, so let's give it a go. Okay, so that's the primary bevel pretty much completed along that side. So I'm now going to flip the jig over and do the same on the other side.
Okay, well there we have it. First groin completed on each side. As you see there, that rounds out straight down to the end of the tip here. And then flip it around. Nice symmetrical. So I'm now going to rearrange the jig all together and we'll start grinding the, uh, the tanto. Okay, well the shape of the main handle is uh, done now, so what I'm going to do is start to look at putting the bolster on there. Now what I've got here is a nice section of 01 tool steel, and I've got some dowel pins to match, which is what I've drilled these holes out here. So I'm going to start at the front, and basically going to uh, trim off a couple of sections of this, one for each side drill them through so they're exactly the same pitch and then um, grind these down to pretty much the final size profile the, the front edge and the back edge where I'm going to see if I can do a little bit of a, a semi dovetail 45 degree slot for the next layer to bolt into Okay, so I drilled the first couple of pieces of tool steel just with one hole going straight through. So those two were nicely aligned left and right in the vise. And then I line up the rest of the knife with that, basically holding them with a pair of uh, mole grips to make sure that nothing moves. Um, I slid this drill bit straight through the hole, which is exact perfect 4mm diameter fit all the way through. And then I'm just going to use the press here to put in a second hole in exactly the correct space. So once this is all done, um, those two bolsters will line up perfectly in every way. Okay, so the blade here is um, looking pretty good. It's all ready for heat treating. I've got a piece of angle iron heating up in the forge there. Nice bit of rebar. So I'm gonna use that to heat up the quench oil. And then um, once that's done, we'll put this in, get it glowing nice and red, make it so the magnet won't stick to it. And then uh, we'll get it quenched.
Okay, so here's the blade post heat treat. As you can see, it's covered in all this nasty scale and oil and everything. But what I'm going to work on a little bit next before cleaning all that up is the bolster. So I've already drilled out the two side pieces which fit through these formula holes in there. So that slides on there. And that goes on there. So that forms the two halves. Now what I'm going to do is just mark off <clears throat> where I need to get rid of all this excess, grind it down on the linisher. I'm going to put a radius on the front here and I'm going to put a 45 degree chamfer on the underside which is where I plan to then inlay some of the warthog ivory. Okay, so this is the tusk that I'm going to uh, try and cut some inlays out of. Uh, thankfully I've got a couple of these, so if it all goes horribly wrong, then I can try again. But my idea is where I've got the bolster on the blade here, I've got it nicely dovetailed in the back. And I'm just going to see if I can cut out kind of a, uh, must be between half and three quarter inch wide piece that I'm going to need. And then dovetail it to go straight in there. And then do the same on the other side. So I'm going to start chopping this up, as you can see the actual thing is hollow for quite a long way in and then after that point there's all bits on here whereas the other cutters on the, the warthog used to chop into this one, so that's how they use the slicing motion. Um, so yeah we'll see how much of it is usable once I cut it apart. First cut in, it looks like this warthog tusk is pretty solid. And with these you can never tell when they're boiled out of the skull. Sometimes they can go very brittle and cracked and things like that. But this one is looking quite sound. So hopefully I'll be able to get some usable material out of it. I'm just working on shaping this ivory into a couple of usable and semi-identical sections so I can use one piece on each half of the handle just tucked up in the dovetail behind the bolster. So the bolsters are all finished up there and then on the warthog tusk um, there's basically a root that goes right down the inside of it which as you can see along here just presents this tiny little hairline feature. Um, now chances are if I put that in the middle of the scale kind of left to right so if I was to put it on there like that and chop off all the rest of this that's probably gonna end up splitting at some stage in the future so my idea is I've cross-sectioned it here so half of that's gone but then I'm gonna split it again straight down the middle of that line so hopefully we'll, we'll end up with uh, two scales out of this one piece and again with those that should line up pretty perfectly to cut out that middle nerve section altogether. Okay so I'm not going to take my respirator off because this warthog tusk absolutely stinks but there you go you can see the tolerances on that joint there are absolutely bang on Before fitting the scales I've decided I'm going to mill just a couple of fairly large 10mm holes through the middle of the handle here just to help cut down on some of the 
the weight to make the balance a bit better. There we go. Carbide end mill. Let's go straight through. And all that's left to do is a lot of surface finishing by hand. I've finished up the uh, hand rubbing down to a 400 grit. You can see on there that the heat treat line is uh, polished just a little bit more than the rest of the blade. So again, basically I think I've got hard metal in a nice band pretty much up and around here and then gradually getting softer. But what I'm going to do now is a bit of a improvised sandblasting rig. I'm going to put a nice uh, blasted finish all the way over here because uh, I'm going to put it into a, a ferric chloride acid etch which uh, should look a lot darker if we uh, rough this up a little bit first but the idea of the sanding was to make sure that there was no uh, nasty scratches or anything in there first of all that we're going to stand out. Okay, so uh, as you can see that's just a few seconds in there and all of a sudden that's made that a real nice matte finish up on here. So I'm just going to uh, wait for the tiny compressor that we've got to uh, man up, refill and then I'll gradually go over the entire blade. Okay, so there we have it, the entire blade nicely sandblasted with aluminium oxide. Um, what I plan to do next is just go and file in a little uh, dimple here at the end of the recasso and um, just basically define where the blade ends and then the handle starts realistically. Probably should have done that before I heat treated it, but it will just be more of an exciting challenge to do it now the blade's hard. Luckily for me, I just got a nice sharp new diamond needle file. Okay, so I'm now uh, going to start to fit the bolster onto here. Um, I've got this piece of silver steel in the bench vise, which I'm about to cut to length. Now on here, if I measure up my bolsters, it's uh, just a tad over 17 and a half mil. So basically I'm just using that same measurement plus a tiny little bit for peening over. Mark that onto here. And I'm literally just gonna take the cutoff tool on a Dremel and make a few of those enough to uh, go in those two bolster holes for now. OK, 
Okay, so I've got those pins cut out. One side of that is just loosely slid over them. This will be the other side. So effectively that all just pushes on there. Which leaves a nice dovetail where the water hog ivory is going to end up. So my plan is now I'm going to acetone all sides of this. And then uh, I'm going to go to town on those pins with this ball peen hammer effectively splay them out into the tiny countersinks that I've made in the metal of the bolster and um, then after that we can finish the rest of the handle and hopefully when we eventually grind the rest of this off we'll be left with a, a nice seamless finish all right so my bolster is now attached solidly a um, little bit of epoxy in there good amount of elbow grease with the hammer and that's uh, pretty darn well attached as I did it I managed to hit this edge a few times which I was pretty sure was going to happen but that doesn't really matter too much because that's going to be profile ground in any case to radius it off um, so today I'm basically going to glue up the ivory which goes in the back there and then I've got a nice piece of G10 which alternates in pattern from black to grey and back again which we're going to then put up behind there to finish the rest of the handle So the ivory and the red inlay is set nicely behind the bolster. So what I've done now is um, I've taken the, the red and grey that I laminated together earlier, put an angle on the front here, I'm going to put a nice red liner 
in there. Then we're going to glue all of that together like that. So I should put a nice uh, ender from the liner that runs along the inside here and then 90 degree angle straight out of there. Then my plan is I'm basically going to epoxy that onto it like so. Then once that has cured overnight, being clamped all the while, I'm basically going to get my 4mm drill bit, drill out all these pinholes and then I'm going to glue the other side onto here, leave that overnight, I'm going to flip it over, use the holes that I drilled to drill the other piece of G10 and then secure the uh, pins at the same time and that will be the handle all glued on, ready for shaping. So the glue's completely gone off now, left it overnight, so this is the complete assembly um, with all the different spacers and liners etc. So my plan now is I'm just going to wrap up the blade with a bit of cardboard and electrical tape to make sure I don't accidentally scratch that and I'm going to jump back on the grinder and um, get rid of all of this and start profiling the handle shape. some detailing on this handle. Just going to finish radiusing off these corners with a die grinder attachment on the Dremel and then uh, we're going to make a and sew pattern on the scales here.
that's the pattern after doing that dremeling. Other side's not done yet. But I'm going to do the other side exactly the same and then see how I feel about it. Gonna give this a quick sandblast, improve the finish all over, and then um, we'll start looking at the acid etching on the blade. So, I've finished bead blasting everything here, and we're gonna do a bit of a drizzle pattern with uh, some of Karen's bestest ever fern cotton endorsed nail varnish. So, let's see what patterns we can get out of this. Okay, we'll just let that go dry in the sun for a few hours. I'm now going to electro etch uh, my friend's initials onto the blade. So I've gotten the vinyl cutter, cut out his initials here, about 5mm tall. And we're going to stick this vinyl onto the blade and then use salt water and a 9 volt battery in order to etch that deep into the metal. Okay, so now the main blade etch has been finished, I'm just going to go over all of this nail varnish with acetone and uh, take it off, see if we're left with some nice silver lines. Now I'm going to hit this with a little bit of 3-in-1 uh, oil and a bit of 2000 grit just to bring out the uh, changes in the gradients around the blade where you can see the profiling. Okay and this is that G10 just after I've polished it and just washed it off in a little bit of soapy water. Goodness, this is a uh, not a stainless steel blade, high carbon steel. Gonna need to keep some oil on the whole thing, which is gonna help that pop even more. So, last but not least, the most important thing about a knife is whether it cuts. 
Now I've got some nice pieces of paper that I got given at the UK Knife Show by uh, this company. And um, it is absolutely perfect for either taking messages or seeing how sharp your knife is.